Hi, I'm Dana, Purist Energy. Just got to keep mentioning it. Anyways, uh, this is the SPS 2AC. You've got it installed. You've got it mounted on your tank. You're ready to charge the system. How are you going to do it? How are you going to get that glycol in the system, that propylene glycol that's food grade, that should anything happen to the heat exchanger, or for whatever reason, all the safety features fail, that it's not going to have a problem with your water supply or cause any issues. Don't use antifreeze. Don't use car antifreeze. Use propylene glycol. So, there's that safety pitch. Well, there are several ways to charge the system. Uh, most of the time, plumbers or tradesmen that are installing these systems will have what they call charge pumps. They'll take a whole bucket of glycol, they'll dunk the pump in there, or hook a tube up to the bucket, and they'll just pump in through the fill valve and have it pour out of the drain valve through the tube into that bucket, and they'll just circulate it through all the way up to the roof and all the way back until there's absolutely no liquid or no apparent large air bubbles in it. And they'll close it off and they'll just keep pressurize it to pressure. And I'll, I'll get to the pressure specifications in a, in a few minutes. But the other way of doing it without having an expensive charge pump is using a very simple garden sprayer. And I have one here. This is mine. This is what I use to top up my system. And I just went to Home Depot and bought a $20 or $15 two gallon uh, sprayer tank. And I took off the nozzle, or never installed the nozzle, and put on a female hose barb, which then I fill up, hook up to the drain side. Um, because the drain side is prior to the check valve, so with my air vent at the top, when I hook it up to the drain side and I pump the charge tank, fill it with glycol, pump, 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 it goes up both ways up to the roof, and the air comes out the top. So that by the time the system gets to the point where I'm starting to pressurize it and charge it, <clears throat> there's very little air in the system. So then the pump turns on and circulates, and any remaining air bubbles get trapped in the uh, scoop and go out through the air vent. And um, so it works out very well. If you ever had a circumstance where it burped out some glycol, you can take that glycol. And uh, what I do is I, I have a little tube. You can see it coming off of my uh, off of my PV valve. If I ever have a circumstance, or did have a circumstance, I really don't, where my expansion tank wasn't sufficient to take the load coming off of it, um, I capture it in like a one-gallon jug at the bottom, um, and then I'd be able to put that into my charge tank, pump it back in, repressurize the system, and keep running. Um, the other uh, thing, and this really is uh, pretty quick and easy, is uh, if you have a, a standard uh, washing machine hose uh, with female ends on either side, you can attach a garden hose to it, hook it up to a bib, take this side, hook it up to either side. If you were dropped a little bit of your pressure and you need to top up the pressure in order to get good flow through the system, adding just a cup or a pint of water will repressurize the system because most systems have less than two or three gallons of glycol in them. Of course that depends on the collector array and how big it is and the size of your tubing going up there, but most of the time we're really just talking about a couple gallons and the difference between five pounds of pressure and thirty pounds of pressure is like sixteen ounces. So what you do is you turn on your water and get the water all the way to the end so that it's completely no air inside of the hose. Hook it up to the purest system turn on your water pressure, slowly crack the drain valve until you get the pressure up to where you want it, shut it off, get the system running. That brings up another point, never run the system, never plug it in without, uh, <clears throat> without having some fluid inside of the both loops. The uh, pumps are very efficient, they're magnet driven, um, they're little, they pretty much ride on a little ceramic ball that creates very, very low friction. Great pumps. But if you run them dry for even a minute or two, it really damages their longevity. So just make sure they're wetted before you run them. It's really not a big deal. Um, so, oh, that brings up the point of, well, how much pressure do I put on the system? The amount of pressure that you put on the system depends on the height between the the system, the SPS 2AC, and the collectors that you have on the roof. You need to, because there's small pumps and circulator pumps and it's a closed loop system, 
you need to overcome gravity. You need to overcome the friction of all the tubing going up to the rooftop and back. Not by much. But in order to do that, here's the thumb rule. You take 14 pounds to overcome atmosphere, and then you add 5 pounds for every 10 feet of height going up to the roof. So if you have 30 feet of height between the basement where you have your system hooked up and the roof at its peak, 30 feet, 3 times 5, 15, plus 14, 29 PSI for that particular circumstance in the example. Now, before you go and charge your system 29 PSI, take your expansion tank. And most of the time, the expansion tank size is something like a decent size, 2 gallon, something or other off the shelf from uh, your local hardware store. Nothing extraordinarily big or extraordinarily expensive, of course, depending on your array. But uh, put a decent size one on there and pressurize it, prior to pressurizing the closed loop, pressurize it to 2 PSI above what you anticipate. So if you say, well, my system's 30 feet tall, and I'm going to pressurize the system to 29 PSI, pressurize the expansion tank to 31 PSI prior to charging the system and charging it to 29 PSI. If you do that, you won't really have any problems no matter what circumstances you have. If the power goes out, your expansion tank should be able to absorb that even if it can't and you burp out, most of the times the system will start up and continue to run. You can optimize the pressure thereafter using either the washing machine hose or the garden pressure or, if you have one, a charge pump. So um, I hope that helps in understanding some of the charging of the system. And uh, thank you.